Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. It's a good deal and helps support the show. What's up, Planeswalkers? Theric 6 back with some more Magic the Gathering Arena. And a little bit of news, um, I'm going to be recording like seven entire days of videos. So you're going to see me in this same, same shirt. Uh, <laughs> I, I might do some of it tomorrow, but for the most part, I'm going to be bulk recording because I'm going to be in um, uh, Quebec for a conference, the Psychonomics... Is this the 60th one? I don't remember. Who cares? Um, I'm going to a Psychonomics conference. I'm going to be presenting a poster, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm going to be in Quebec for a week. Um, and so I'm going to need to pre-record videos. Now, one other thing I, I'm going to say in this video and probably the rest of them uh, before I jump into it is essentially I checked my YouTube analytics and apparently the number of subscribers who have rung the bell is lower than the YouTube average. So if, if you're a sub, go ahead and ring the bell because YouTube doesn't want to give you my videos. I've definitely seen plenty of comments um, recently, especially, uh, where people are just like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you still made videos because they weren't getting my videos. So go ahead and press that notification button and we're just going to hop into the deck. Now, today we're playing Quick Facts. I've been trying to get this deck to work for a little while. Um, I think maybe I finally have something that is usable. Now, when I say usable, I don't mean good, okay? Uh, this is <laughs> this is something where I think I can probably get it to work at least once uh, in the video. And this essentially is an Esper control deck that aims to win via... <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Fires of Invention deck without Fires of Invention uh, because it uses Smothering Tithe and Emergency Powers to get a large amount of artifacts to either win with Fae of Wishes and getting something else or winning with Tezzeret and just draining my opponent um, in one big swoop. Now... We do have some interesting synergies here um, because we have cards that care about artifacts and enchantments. It's pretty good. So we have two Witching Wells. This is a really nice early game card if I have the ability to play it where I'm going to be able to scry and get a little bit more knowledge of what I'm going to be getting soon. And then, of course, four mana to sacrifice and draw two cards. Pretty decent. Two Fave Wishes. Now, why am I only running two of these? Because since we aren't actually a Fires of Invention deck and there are more hoops for us to go through, I didn't want to have Fave Wishes kind of just suck in my hand or need necessarily to play them as a 1-4. So it's only a two of because I want to see them later in the game um, or, excuse me, in some scenarios, not at all. Um, two Glass Caskets. This is an artifact that performs a helpful job in that it is kind of a fetchable answer to low low end creatures, right? Using Glass Casset, we're going to be able to deal with some things. And since it's an artifact, they have to use artifact removal. And that's not super prevalent. There are some Rampages rolling, running around. There are some Bedevils running around. Um, but against Esper Control, you know, mostly they're playing Mortifies. And this dodges uh, D-Sparks. You know, so it's it's okay. It's okay. Two Thought Erasures. Um, not the usual four that I run. Uh, the reason for that essentially is... I don't need necessarily a full set of Thought Erasures, and I have so many Enters tap lands that I don't want to deal too much damage to myself, so I decided to only run two. For what it's worth, there's probably a way more optimized list for this, and uh, I just can't find it because, one, I don't have the time, and two, I'm not the best deck builder. <laughs> Some might say I'm not even good. Um, we have two Prison Realms here. Very helpful at dealing with creatures or Planeswalkers that have already, you know, s sat in for a while. Mostly Planeswalkers, frankly. Um, and what's really nice is that, once again, it's an enchantment, so we can kind of get it um, easier, and it scries, which is helpful. Four Midnight Clocks. Uh, this deck kind of needs ramp insofar as we want to be able to consistently play a 7-drop. So Midnight Clock, I found, is actually super helpful, and it is something where we can spend the early part of our game just dealing, like, one-for-one one with things if we have to, and spending any leftover mana to pump in a Midnight Clock, and then whoosh! All of a sudden, we have uh, a bunch more cards in our hand to work with, um, hopefully some of which are going to be Emergency Powers and or Tezzeret. So, Midnight Clock, has, I've actually found, is quite helpful in this deck. Two Teferis. Uh, Teferi is good because, one, it means that my opponents can't counter me when I'm trying to go off. Two, it means that I can cast something like a Time Wipe at instant speed so that I can potentially uh, deal with more things than I otherwise would be able to without taking any damage. And three, it's great because the minus three, I can just bounce something of my own. We've already gone through a few cards that I don't necessarily care about bouncing. Midnight Clock, not as much. But bouncing these, I can actually get more value out of if there's a better threat or whatever. So, for example, something I have done in practice is I would bounce a Glass Casket when I knew I was about to Kai's Wrath, right? So, it allows me to keep using that Glass Casket, kind of guarantee that that creature is permadead because of the fact that now, they, if they even have artifact removal, they can't just get rid of my Casket and get their creature back. Um, and it draws me, it essentially draws me two cards, right? So, uh, Teferi is very helpful in this deck. Of course, only two of because 
I don't know how to optimize this list. <laughs> Two absorbs. I don't know how to apply, uh, optimize this list, but some things are big and we need to be able to say no. Three Arcanist Owls. This is like the card that really ties this all together. Four mana for a 3-3 flyer is not the best, but it can block. And it lets us look at the top four and get an artifact or enchantment from the top put into our hand. That's pretty decent. Now, obviously, we only have, you know, 17. But still, that's that's not awful. And having a card that can block while getting us the Smothering Tide that we need, finding that Prison Realm or something like that, is helpful, right? That is something that's helpful. If nothing else, we could just get an additional Arcana style, right? Speaking of Smothering Tithe, Smothering Tithe is, like, part of the way we win this game. Smothering Tithe allows us to, over the course of the game, accrue a decent number of treasures. These treasures then are changed into um, mana that we can use to do multiple things in a single turn. Um, notably, we don't have any, like, special lands here. I did want to have um, Castle Ventress to kind of have something to use our treasures on, but I just found that the mana base didn't didn't appreciate it. Um, so we don't have that, but we do have the ability to, if we have to, pump these, these treasures into using our Witching Well, using our Midnight Clock, um, things like that. But also, it, com it combines really nicely with Emergency Powers, I'm just going to skip there and talk about it now, where each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into the library, then draws seven, co seven cards, Exile it. If you cast this spell during your main, main phase, which you always will, um, put a permanent card with converted man cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, you can put an additional Smothering Tithe. If your opponent has an annoying thing, you can put a Prison Room. If you're looking for something else, you can play an Arcane Sowl. But usually what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a Tesseret. Because what this means is when you have Smothering Tithe out and you play Emergency Powers, you're going to get a large number of treasure tokens because your opponent is likely not going to be able to pay a bunch of two, right? Minimum you're going to get if you just have one Smothering Tithe and your opponent has no mana is seven. That's totally fine. This is a plus two for a 14-point swing, right? You gain seven, your opponent loses seven. That's very helpful. Additionally, right, if you have two, that's 14. <laughs> that almost certainly is going to be able to win you the game, if not secure the game in your favor. I um, mean, if you have three of these, your opponent is just dead. If, for some reason, you don't have a Smothering Tithe out, but you really need to cast emerging, Emergency Powers and you end up getting a Tesseret, you can still do certain things depending on how much mana you have left over. Um, you can return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Glass Casket is an artifact. That helps us because we can play it and get rid of a creature. Um, it has to be a small creature, but it's still something, right? Um, minus 8, you're never going to use this ability. You should always use the plus 2 and the minus 3 if you have to. But how are we going to get to that point? We have a couple of uh, board wipes. We have Kai's Wrath as well as Time Wipe. Kai's Wrath... Um, we have a 2-2 split essentially because this is easier to cast, but this is earlier. Um, you could argue that instead we should be playing um, Ritual Soot. However, as you can probably see, black is the splash color. So Ritual Soot isn't tech. It, it is more, it is easier to cast, but not where it matters. This is our mana base. Um, look, it is what it is. All right. I tried my best. I think we have, what, 26 lands? Yeah, 26 lands. We are control. And this is our sideboard. Now, our sideboard is... A wish board. We don't have any creatures in here. Um, but for the most part, we are just chilling. Um, if we have used an emergency powers and we have enough mana to um, fave wishes for another emergency powers, that's often sometimes that you something you need to do if you don't have a tr uh, Tezzeret just yet. Uh, you can end up getting, you know, played one celebration to gain a bunch of life. Um, if you really need to grind, um, you can go ahead and get a, a Derek. Um, you know, there's other Time Wipe in here, Elder Spell, just a bunch of things. If you want to be fancy, uh, you can go ahead and use Folio Fancies to kind of force your opponent to draw a bunch more. Then you get more Smothering Tide, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? It's not in the main deck essentially just because it isn't great against a lot of decks. So, all right, so this is uh, recording number one. Ah! Damn it. I think I got some of that in my beard. This hand is okay. A little slow, obviously. But it's okay. Uh, going second, not the best. But we're going to probably play the Temple of Silence first. Oh, I really hope this isn't mono blue. I Or flash. Flash probably sucks too. Is it flash? Okay. Might not be flash. Is it? Is it Simic Ramp? This must be an artifact deck, right? This this has to be, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Sword, Sword in the Stone Lady. 
Right? That just has to be that deck. It only hits creatures, right? Yeah. Okay, so I can't use my Teferi. I can still cast him and have him out there. Blue, black. Okay, never mind. Main deck, Duress and Sorcerer Spyglass. I assume they're going to drop my powers. No reason to drop... Yeah, no reason to drop Casket or anything. Um, blue, blue, white. I'm just going to play this and pass. I haven't absorbed for whatever the heck my opponent is doing. I'm very curious to see what my opponent's doing. All right, well, I'm just going to go and play this. Tapped. Because I currently don't need to do anything. I'm in no rush. Now there apparently is my opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Car outside, shut up. Um, let us witching well. So my opponent can start Castle of Interesting. So that is kind of a, an issue. Um, I'm at 21. I'll probably play this untapped just so I can use witching well. Another Arcanist Owl. I don't need this. Um, I'm fine with the land, though. And we're just going to pay two life here. Allows us to use Witching Well if we want to, um, while keeping up our Teferi. So, yep, they're going to use Ventress. Next turn, I'm going to just cast Teferi. And the reason I'm going to do that is because even though I won't be able to hold up Witching Well, I might end up Witching Well at the end of my opponent's turn. Um, it means that my opponent on the following turn won't be able to counter any of my spells. So, Or they waste a counter spell on Teferi. Right? Either way is fine. The thing long, long and hard about the scry. Very, very curious. Okay, one top, one bottom. That's fine. Very curious as to what my opponent is actually, like, doing. Daughter Razor. Well, I have to absorb that. Is it going to be a didn't say please? Is this just like a hard, a hard blue-black control deck? So we're going to take one of my owls... Which is fine, because um, their shields are going to be down, and I can just play another. So this is just a blue-black general control deck, I think. They cap it on top. Um, just just going to play this. And I'll get a midnight clock, sure. Play this tapped. Nothing I can do with that mana. So now my opponent has to deal with an Arcanist Owl that's going to keep hitting them for three every turn. It's not a lot. Oh, and they had nothing else to do. That's nice. Um, so my opponent knows about the Midnight Clock. I'm going to attack first. They only have one black, so that might be the limiting factor here, is that my opponent only has access to one black. Uh, I am going to go ahead and cast Midnight Clock. It resolves, and I can cast Smothering Tide this turn. Um, although, actually... So I could, I could cast Teferi here as kind of a bait. I think I'm going to cast Teferi here. And the reason for this is if Teferi resolves, then the rest of my things get to resolve. And that's what they have to think about here. Even though I'm not able to use Teferi's abilities, Teferi resolving means that they can no longer use counter spells. Now, obviously, um, if they use a 3-mana counter, I could still get countered by Quench, right? But they would have to have, you know, an additional quench. Um, Disdainful Stroke wouldn't work on it. Um, or too many. I think negates. Yeah, negates still in standard. So if they ha if they have a main ne main deck negate, that would also work. Um, but yeah, opponent has to think real hard, and that's what happens when you're playing straight up blue black control. <laughs> I do need to kind of weave around this game. Because of the, the exact deck my opponent's playing. But for what it's worth, I think this is kind of a deck where my deck... Uh, <laughs> deck has lost all meaning. Uh, where my deck should shine because of the fact that uh, my opponent isn't putting a lot of pressure on me. Right? Against against an aggressive deck, I think it would be a little bit harder. Um, and I, I have been lucky that I, I've only drawn Glass Casket so far as kind of a dead card. Right? The rest of the cards have been totally fine. So, you know, sometimes I, I get a little complaining. Uh, when I'm drawn poorly, but I'm gonna be right I'm gonna be truthful when uh, when I get things that do go my way. So now the opponent can't cast uh, counter anything. You can't counter. That's not how social spy glass works. You cannot counter it. Thank you very much. You cannot do anything during my turn. 
Well, you still could have used Castle Ventress. So that was a missed opportunity for my opponent. Might have been tilted a little by the spyglass. Cut the... What the hell is happening? Okay, I mean, I, sure, okay. Duress, get rid of my Smothering Tithe. Incredibly rude. Um, but that's why we have Midnight Clock. I'll be able to recoup some of those uh, some of those losses. Um, and I'll probably end up just using Willi uh, Wishing. I'm just going to cast Smothering Tithe here. And not... And not attack with Arcanist Owl? One, two... Wait, wait. How much do you cost? Three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. But I might want to use Witching Well under turn. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pay two life for it. We'll get this in. Just not attack. Yeah, just just gonna not attack. I, I have no need to. Opponent still only on one black. That, as I said, could be a limiting factor. But cut the, so this is like a real weird tempo deck, is what I'm assuming. All right, well, I have another black source, but they. Wow, yeah, they just concede because they're a counterspell deck and they let Teferi resolve. I'll take it. I mean, I wish I was able to show off the thing, but... I'm not going to look the look a gift match in the mouth. Gift, gift game. Ah. Got some Black Bear Lemonade. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the arena Reddit as I off do. See if anything interesting is going on. Uh, nothing early. We do get to go first, which is nice. Um, we do have access to a Smothering Tithe as long as we get a little bit more mana. Um, not a great hand for Kaiserath, but I do think with 26 lands in the deck, I think this is an okay hand. Um, I'm actually going to start with Watery... Well... No, I'm going to start with Hollow Fountain. Because if they play a haste, or like a really strong turn 1 creature and I draw a Casket, I'd rather not lose life. Um, and it does look like our opponent is on some sort of aggressive strategy. Possibly just Gabos. Um, so I do Time Wipe, very helpful. But I am going to need to get to something a little bit stronger as well. Uh, Absorb on 3 is is good. No, it's definitely good for, for what it is, but I'm going to need more lands um, to get to my time wipe here. Although, if my opponent kept a one lander... Okay. I was very confused. Stage? Sure, sure. Interesting. Okay, we did get another land. That's helpful. Can be blocked this turn by creatures. Except by creatures. Um, so I'm probably going to absorb something here. Probably that, that light up the stage. Um, and then the following turn, play my Hallowed Fountain into my Arcanist Owl as a nice blocker. Light up the stage, gonna go and absorb that. Um, I'm only, like, getting rid of part of the other light up the stage, but I am getting rid of two potential cards, right? So, the th game three is helpful, and Mask of Emulation is not too much of a problem for me right now. Um, losing two from this, not the best, but should be fine. Ooh, Glass Casket. I don't hate that. But we are just going to go and play this Owl. Now, obviously, they could use a Burn Spell on my Owl, but that'll be a two for one. Never mind, I didn't, I didn't get a card off our Owl. And that's going to happen sometimes. You know, we're, we're only running, what, 17? It's going to happen from time to time. Um, but still, you know, a burn, a burn Spell to my Owl is not a Burn Spell to my face, right? Sure. Sure, and if they're, if they're spending two mana to hit me for one damage, or for two damage total, I'm fine with that. Three three mana for three damage, or technically it was all four, four mana for three damage. I am fine with that. I'm also going to block that, yeah. Um, I would I would wipe this board. I would lose one from the mask as long as my opponent is smart and actually uses its ability. Um, didn't get a land, very unfortunate. Um, I could use Glass Casket. But I'm just going to play Smothering Tithe so that I can actually get to the point where I can Time Wipe next turn. Um, and the Time Wipe, hopefully, 
is kind of sufficient to get me back in, back in, uh, into the game enough. Um, I'm still not going to attack, and the reason for this is I want my opponent to keep tying up their mana into their dodgers. Now, you could say that I should have attacked so that my opponent does commit more to the board. However, I don't want to die, <laughs> and red has burn capabilities. Now, my opponent has not shown those, right? Right now, my opponent is playing what I assume to be a cavalcade deck, you know, just based on the, the sheer amount. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that, right? They're still using resources to kill my owl. That's fine. Yeah, so those are resources not going in my face. My opponent possibly going to play a um, another card. They could, I guess, equip, uh, equip this. But but I can play time wipe next turn. They play another dodger. Sure, sure. I'm going to go down to nine. Yeah, it looks like just nine. Not awful. Ow, but not awful. Oh, yeah. Dude, play another one one. Do it, coward. All right, so we're just gonna we're just gonna wait. Obviously, still need more lands. Still need more lands, but this is fine. And my opponent didn't attach, so cool, cool. Now we just need to kind of uh, work up with our smothering tithe and uh, start gaining some life, or just you know draw lands. So opponent probably just gonna play a creature here. Attach mask is my guess. Torbrand, all right. Uh, goodbye, Torbrand. I can't... Oh, I do have enough. I have enough mana. I'm going to do this now. Because my opponent likely is going to give me another thing. But I'm going to just Midnight Clock first. Because it is its mana. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put Torbrand into the prison. For crimes against me. If it's not a land, it's going away. That is a land. But I really like an untapped land, so I can just use emergency powers as soon as possible. Am I going to go for the greed? Four, five, six. I'm going to go for the greed, which is probably stupid, but I'd have to wait an additional turn anyway, right? Um, unless my opponent is actively going to not let me have some tokens. Shit! <laughs> Alright, that was, that was bad. Oh, that, that gets got with the casket, though. Hey, I did it. I always believed in myself. And I can go ahead and activate this. End of turn, so. They just concede again. Alright, cool. <laughs> I wanted to show... I could have done the thing. I could have done the thing and shown the people what they wanted to see. <sighs> How sad. And then we'll rock another one. Uh, because I'm going to be bulk recording... These games are, I'm going to probably try and keep them to about 30 minutes, um, which might mean some some matches or, or some videos are going to be two uh, two games. I'm hoping very few of them are going to be two games. Uh, luckily, this one will be at least three. Oh, God. Um, well, Mikey with the full blue has me assuming they're either mono blue or mono red. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is like a greed keep. Because if they're, if they're even if even if they're not mono blue, it could still be a mono blue aggro deck, right? Um, because we definitely don't. One of those emergency powers isn't real, right? We have six cards because the second emergency powers, if we cast the first one, will get shuffled away, right? So we have functionally six cards. Okay, um, our first two turns are nothing, and since we're going second, that could be dangerous. Um, our third turn, we would need to top deck something that we can play. Only then, on our fourth turn, could we play Smothering Tithe, which, once again, we do nothing immediately. It doesn't impact the board. I think because of that, I have to mulligan it. I had 26 lands in this damn deck. That's not exactly what I wanted to see. Um, uh, we have a Midnight Clock. We have a Thought... Because we have a Thought Erasure, I think I'm going to keep this. Turn one Fabled Passage into a Swamp. Turn two Hollow Fountain into Thought Erasure. Hope to get that third. Once we have that third, we have access to Midnight Clock. Midnight Clock and put us into Arcanus Owl. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, the potential greed. That might be bad. I'm, gonna, I'm clicking on this right now. Oh, fuck. See? See? <laughs> I got those big brain strats. I would have... For what it's worth, I would have died with that first hand. Um, I shouldn't have done that yet, but... Um, I would have absolutely died with that first hand. I assume this isn't actually mono red. I assume it's knights. But... Oh my god, is it actually just straight up? It's straight up cavalcade. I see you. I know how this game is played. I also see that I'm going to die. 
I'm down to 15. Uh, well, I'm going to get rid of this. That is a land. They're going to play land. Maybe I should have just gotten rid of Tor Torbrand's going to hurt us too. I think, I think this is just uh, a non-existent game. Because I'll even I'll be able to Arcanist Owl, but my opponent's gonna play Torbrand this turn. Uh, they're gonna get a. Oh, uh, they didn't play a Dwarf because that's not a. Okay, so I'm gonna take three. So, yeah, I'm dead. <gasps> the swamp. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm gonna concede now just so I can get to another game. But I, I should have mulligan the second hand. I I do still think that I should have mulligan the first hand. Right, like I still would have lost in that situation, right? I, I guess it depends on what I draw. Um, but I definitely... St I stick by the first mulligan. The second mulligan, I, I should have taken. Um, but... I stick by it, damn it! A gone. A gone. I get to go first. I have a Thought Erasure. Seems Dece. Not the best. These cards kind of aren't in our hands. Uh, but if our opponent's on aggro, I can do this, so. Seems fine. Play the Trunk of Coove on turn one, obviously. Makes this only cost one life. Kind of. Not really. Red? Alright. Okay. You could just play Fae of Wishes here to type my opponent's mana, but I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Thought Erase route. Um, let's see. I'm going to drop the light at the stage. Just so they don't get more cards. Um, I'm going to drop Arcanist Howl. It is obviously quite good, but I kind of want to be able to get more lands. Cavalcade. Cavalcade is not great for me here. Um, not really much I can do about it. That's not what I wanted to see. We're going to go and do this. Get rid of that uh, Spitfire, I think. They don't have a they don't have the mana for it. But I still think it's kind of necessary. That's well, I guess yeah, I fucked that up. Well no. I can play this next turn. And then use this, so yeah, it's fine. And i I kind of have to play this as a, a blocker. But yeah, the drawing the second emergency powers was pretty bad for me. Um, but they're gonna be out of cards pretty soon, so that's that's helpful, at least. So I'm going to be down to 12, could potentially be down to 8. Could potentially be down to 9. I'm just going to, just going to cast this as a thing. If my opponent wants to double shoot it, I'm fine with that. And pass for now. It looks like they're going to shoot it. For what it's worth, I think that's correct. Because it ties up their two mana now. Instead of on their turn to use 10 Street Hooligans. Er, that's the podcast that involves Pixie Kitten. And I think, what, Zuby Magic? I don't know. I can't remember. I haven't... I'm not able to actually watch a lot of Magic content. Which is, like, the worst thing about being a content creator. Is that you can't really... You don't have a lot of time to watch other content. Fudge. Okay. This, this deck early had a Mortify in it, but I don't. <sighs> Mono Red, definitely the hardest thing uh, for this deck to deal with. I think I need, like, exactly Kai's Wrath? Well, no, I, like, even just getting rid of one of these. So I think I am going to thin the deck out. I'm going to go ahead and get a White Source here, just in case I do top deck a Kai's Wrath. Um, I don't want to draw land, so that's why I... Did that. Um, Alright, so I'm at 8. This is 3, 6. So I'm down to 2. And this deck is known for its burn. And haste. So. I am probably just dead. No. And now I'm dead. Darn. Once again, not, not the best uh, draw in terms of mana. Uh, I, I did keep an emergency powers plus a Tezzeret, but... I don't know. I felt it was probably fine. That said, I'm, I'm okay with that outcome. Going to open a pack here. 
got a couple wins, a couple losses. The, the losses were expected. The wins were unfortunate, of course, because of the fact that we didn't get the actual combo off. But, man, whatever. We're at about 30. So, you know, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, especially Zin and Furigod, for the continued support. If you'd like to join them and support in the show, you can find links to that down in the description. Um, I'm not going to do this on all of them, but I'm going to say not in my cutesy way that I do it. Um, like this video. Comment. Subscribe. Ring the bell because that's it's like important to do for some reason. Um, and the only reason I'm saying it like not cutesy is it really does help the channel. Uh, because right now the channel's not doing great. <laughs> um, which you know, part of that I assume is because Arena right now is fucking like this. The meta game right now is trash. Um, the just the entire uh kind of magic culture right now is, is not the happiest. Um, so I assume a lot of it's because of that. A lot of it, also, probably my fault. Because <laughs> I'm not good at the game. Uh, I, I, and I just play random shit. But, you know, it, it does help. Uh, if you if you like to see the channel thrive, um, it really does. It really does do a lot to do that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, everyone. I'll be one.